You're listening to The Scrimmage with Daniel Hargrove and Justin Domashevitz. It is now time for the Ole Penn Real Estate Athlete of the Week. And this week, since uh, we still don't have any sports, we are looking back in time a little bit. And we are talking about one of our favorites here. I think we've talked to him before, talked about him a little bit. And that is Lane Bruner. And he is our Ole Penn Historical Athlete of the Week. And uh, really, kid who had a, a fun career to look at. So we'll dive into a little bit of that. The team of realtors at Ole Penn Real Estate wish you and your family good health during this stay home, stay safe time. Their team has health and safety measures in place to protect you and everyone involved in the process. If you're thinking about selling your home, now is a great time. There are more buyers than available homes. Many homes are still receiving multiple offers and are selling for above asking price. Ole Penn Real Estate will help you put the most money possible in your pocket in less time without the hassle. Visit sellmyharborhome.com to get your home market ready. The Ole Penn team is ready to work for you. He started out, well, I'm sure he didn't start out in high school. I'm assuming he was really good. He was probably one of those guys in Little League who was really good. Uh, but he earned, according to his WSU Athletics bio page, he Go had three letters. Oh, yeah, this is our second Coug in a row, by the way. Go Cougs. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're willing to let a Monty kid in <laughs> as long as he's a Coug. Okay, let's not get into the Monty discussion Because you've been so anti Monty. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> totally have. So he earned three letters in baseball. That's expected. He also had three in basketball. I remember him as an excellent basketball player. And one in football. I don't think he played his senior year, He though. did not play his no. senior year, and his teammates won a state title. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> It was that team. Yeah. I forgot that that was the case. Yep. Uh, he was an all-state selection in baseball, and this is interesting, named the eighth best pro, sp- pro prospect in Washington by Baseball America in 2013. He was actually selected by the Baltimore Orioles in the 26th round of the 2013 MLB first-year player draft. And interesting, Justin, I think that we should note that he was probably going to be drafted higher mm-hmm. had he not expressed a lot of interest in going to school instead of going to the MLB draft. Yeah, I have a, a pretty good amount of insight on this because I've I've spoken with Lane several times. We actually, in the original iteration of our show, we interviewed him. But I know Lane's dad, Mike, a little bit, and he is the coach of the Grays Harbor College Jokers. He used to be the coach of Montesano's high school baseball team. And I've had some conversations with Lane. Also, I've had um, my sons had a couple of like one-on-one coaching sessions in baseball with Lane uh, a while back. So I've talked with him about this stuff a decent amount. Basically, after his senior season of high school, they knew fairly confidently he was going to be drafted in the Major League Baseball draft. They looked at what all the different levels of signing bonuses you get because they're basically locked in in baseball. If you get picked in such and such round, you get this signing bonus. So they looked at it and they thought, okay, well, you can go to college. He had an offer from WSU and he had picked that as if i go to college i'm going to go to wsu it was full baseball which i think covers roughly half of your tuition so they looked at what's the value of the signing bonus we can get compared to the value of this scholarship so they were looking at it from a really analytical point because they thought well straight out of high school if i can get a really good signing bonus then worst case scenario if it doesn't work out in major league baseball i can use that money to go back and get my college degree so they they went at it i think from a really smart perspective but they knew he needed to be drafted in the first 5 rounds the first 5 rounds lapsed it is my understanding that he would have been selected in the 6th round um but they told the team that called him Um, and the teams kind of knew all the teams that were interested in kind of knew going into it. If he gets picked after five, he's going to go to college instead of play major league baseball. At that point, was it the 25th round that he got picked in? The 26th. 26th round. He, so a team basically said, well, 
this is a flyer just in case you change your mind about college. We're going to pick you in the 26th round. So he still did end up getting picked. But basically, because they're trying to fill all their farm systems but, too. Yeah. So he, he probably would have gotten picked about 20 rounds earlier in that draft had he said, yes, I'm all in. I want to go to the major leagues. So he decided to go to WSU. And Lane told me, that even though his WSU career was, you know, a kind of a roller coaster ride, it was full of ups and downs, he felt that going to WSU helped him grow so much as a person that even if he went back, he wouldn't change it because he came back from college really different from when he left. Excellent story to learn more about how somebody does use that time to grow, even if it doesn't go as you expected. So I believe the coach... There was a coaching yeah. change while he was at Washington yeah, State. It right. was Donnie Marbit who was actually from the Grace Harbor area. Yes, and I, I, you, I could be wrong about this, but I think Lane told me that he was the first Grace Harbor athlete that Donnie Marbit had recruited to play at WSU. Yeah, it's not like he could have signed Daniel. Yeah, it's not like I didn't go over and try and walk <laughs> on over there. Or Did anything. you guys know that Daniel batted over 400 in his okay. senior year okay. of high school? Okay, that was not the comment that I was hoping to get the discussion <laughs> into. Anyway, so his freshman year, he appeared in 15 games. He had two starts, uh, 0-1, had a rough ERA his first year. But, I mean, going from high school mm-hmm. to Division One, and they're still using metal bats. Yes, it's and also, tough. I can address that too, because he told me he was so used to, in high school, just being able to blow the ball past people. Like, if he was in a pickle, he would say, okay, well, I know I can go to my fastball and most guys aren't going to hit it. And he got to college, increased competition, and he had to learn how to pitch because he couldn't just blow his fastball past everybody. That makes a ton of sense, yeah. because especially at the 1A ranks at that time, yeah. probably, what, close to 90 mile an hour fastball? I would say he was around. I think it was low 90s at that Low point. 90s? Yeah. yeah. I, I would say that that was higher than anybody was seeing yeah. against anybody they're facing, especially in this area. So that makes a ton of sense. You go to D1 and everybody's like, yeah, that, we've seen that before. It's still fast, but not crazy. Um, his sophomore year, he had a pretty darn good season his sophomore year. He appeared in 19 games, starting two he had a 2 and 0 record, a 352 ERA, which is very respectable, respectable in D1 baseball where you, like I said, you're using metal bats. Mm-hmm. It's yoked dudes using metal bats and you know, you flick your wrists out there and they can get out. Kind of scary to be a pitcher. Yeah. Uh, he had 20 Ks and 23 innings, so that's not too bad either. Uh, earned a his first collegiate victory, that was against San Jose State when he struck out one in a scoreless inning and allowed just one earned run and three hits, all singles, in his final 14 appearances. So it sounds like a, an excellent year as a reliever. I mean, he started two games, but it sounds like a, a bunch of his success came out of the bullpen and had a darn good year. And then, I mean, you start, you look at the numbers between sophomore year and junior year, and you're like, All right, something had to have happened here because he just appeared in 13 games, only had 10 innings of work. He had 10 Ks, and his ERA uh, jumped up to 7.2. And you're like, well, it seems like he was progressing in what you would want to see, and yet that's not really what it shows with his numbers there. So that is where that coaching change happened, and there's just a bunch of different circumstances. You know, a new regime. He wasn't recruited by that coach. And a lot of different things kind of happened that last year at Washington State. Yeah, it's a big shakeup whenever you have, like, a coach comes in and he's not the coach that recruited you. And, you know, you can find yourself in a situation where that coach has a different view of what your utility is to the team at that point. So, you know, Lane kind of turned into a specialist setup man. And, I mean, I've watched him pitch quite a bit in high school, and he was not a specialist setup man. (laughs) He was a starter. He could throw – he knew how to pitch. He could throw a lot of pitches, and I feel like that's probably what he wanted to do. And I I don't know a lot of the inside of that story, but I can imagine, you know, how difficult it would be as a player to go from, you know, the coach that recruited you to a coach that doesn't view you the same way as the coach that recruited you. Absolutely. Even with that, though, the Orioles, the team who took a flyer on him in Mm -hmm. the 26th round, still loved him, picked him in the 18th round that year, and that is when he signed out of college. 
uh, bounced around a little bit in their organization. He played for some different summer leagues and stuff like that. But in the Orioles, he played in the Gulf Coast League. Actually, I remember this when it happened. He played for a team in Aberdeen. Yep. Uh, Aberdeen, Maryland, Maine? Not exactly <laughs> sure where it was, but it was a team in Aberdeen, and I thought that was pretty funny. But he had some mixed results there in the bigs. But, uh, Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, there was some. that's when some injury issues started to come into play. He had some injury issues, struggled to bounce back from the injury issues, and then while he was trying to get back, the team kept bouncing him back and forth between different minor league programs, and he was... You know, basically at his own expense without much time at the drop of a hat having to travel from Florida back up to Maryland. And then it, it just became it just became too much to where it wasn't worth it anymore. I don't think Lane has ruled out a possibility of going back to play again. And I think he certainly is capable of it if, he, if he's healthy. But, you know, that situation just became too much for him. I remember him uh, from high school. And I think... We, we've had some athletes that have gone on to have some good success. We haven't had a lot of athletes that have had a tremendous amount of recruiting to go pro. Lane was by far the biggest athlete that I've covered that had pro teams after him like crazy. Um, I remember in his senior year, I was working for the Daily World and I covered, it might have been the first game of the year. It was definitely the first league game of the year. So it was really early on. Um, it was a game at Olympic Stadium against Hoquiam. And Hoquiam had a good team that year, too. Exactly, they did. They were very good that year. Um, and I got there to cover it, and I was looking around, and I start to see all these people in different major league hats. And, like, some of them are sitting in groups together, and they have on all the, you know, a bunch of them are identified with their major league teams. And I had no idea what was going on. And I was like, what the heck is this? So... I went up and I asked one of the guys, like, are you guys, are you guys scouts? Or are you here to scout somebody? And he was like, oh yeah, we're all here to watch this Bruner kid pitch. And at the time I was like, oh geez, I'm just a correspondent. Did, did my <laughs> editor make a mistake by sending me to this game? And so I, I called the, the Daily World office and I talked to, I don't remember if it was Rick or Rob, but one of the guys there and they were like, oh, you got scouts there? That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, you know, just cover the game. You know, can try to talk to them a little bit and get some insights. Don't include any quotes from them. But so I did talk to some of these scouts like, what are you looking for? You know, um, gosh, that's so cool. The, the thing I, it was really fun. <laughs> so the cool. thing I remember that was the most interesting was that it was raining that day and I felt that on any normal day, they probably would have canceled that game. But ah. And I did talk to one of the umpires afterwards, and I asked him, was that a consideration when you guys decided to play? Because it rained through the whole game. Yeah. Did you guys consider that? The fact that there was, I, th I believe there was 13 scouts there. Wow. 13 major wow. league teams were represented, I believe, at that game. And I asked the umpire afterwards, was that a consideration? And he said yes. He, did, he didn't say that it was the final consideration, but they did discuss that. Wow. The fact that there were so many scouts there to watch him play. Now, as the season went on, there was tons of scouts at a lot of the games, and so that one probably seemed less significant. Um, but in that game, you know, talking to the scouts, and one of them had, you know, a couple of them had radar guns, and they were, you know, clocking his pitches, like measuring the difference between the fastball and the, the breaking ball. And then... I remember asking them, like, what are you looking for? Like, what is it? And the guy was like, well, we kind of mostly want to see, we want to clock the fastball. We want to see the difference between the fastball and the breaking ball. And I said, well, what is the difference between his fastball and his breaking ball? And he said, oh, it's about 11 miles an hour. And that's good. I thought, wow, that's really good. And then after the game was over, because uh, Lane's dad, Mike, was the head coach of the team at that time. So I always did coach interviews after the games. And I talked to Mike after the game and I was like, hey, I was talking to one of the scouts. And um, he said that uh, Lane was 11 miles per hour difference on his fastball to his breaking ball. And Mike went, ah, oh, man, we really shoot for more like 12. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And I told him, you know, the scout who told me that did say that they felt the moisture on the ball may have affected him a little bit. Oh, wow. But he pitched really well that yeah. day. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the amount of meticulousness that goes into that. I know. Like, oh, 11. Oh, we want 12. <laughs> That's crazy to me to think of. So... I mean, we've both enjoyed 
covering lane in a, in different fashions with different sports and stuff. Yes. And, and I would say I have never had a negative interaction with Lane. Oh. I've talked to him many times. He is, I mean, he's an adult now, but he's incredibly respectful to me. Like, you know, somehow I'm like a, like his parents age or something. I'm not, but like he treats <laughs> me like an adult, even though he's an adult, like he's a very respectful kid. That's true. Which makes me feel weird. Cause I'm younger than you are. And he's, Still kind of says hi to me in the same way. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you just hit a dinger off us in softball. Yeah. Like, I don't have to... <laughs> like, we're just playing against each other now. He plays. He played for one of the slow pitch teams. And uh, it's interesting because he was a pitcher. And yet there's still a difference. Not a prolific hitter in high school. But dang, he s- smokes dingers in softball. It's yes. crazy. I did once cover a game... In Elma, that same season, his senior year, where they played against the Eagles, and he hit two doubles off the fence in that game. So it's not like he was incapable of hitting. He just wasn't a very consistent hitter. And he usually played first base when he didn't pitch. Yeah, he just didn't focus on it because he was being scouted to be a pitcher. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's like, come on. If I was getting scouted to shoot threes, I wouldn't really be focusing on my post play. Yeah. I actually remember, I remember asking him after that Elma game when I watched him hit those doubles. And I was like, you know, when these scouts uh, talk to you, do they ever talk to you about your hitting? Like, are you ever scouted for your hitting ability? And he laughed. (laughs) (laughs) He chuckled at me. (laughs) Oh, that's good. So Lane Bruner, our athlete of the week brought to you by Oli Penn Real Estate.